194 amps. I'm getting almost 300 amps of output at idle. That's fantastic. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. I know, as always, I am super glad to be here. This is a 2007 Chevrolet Silverado. It's the classic body style with six ticks Duramax. That's the LBZ. She has approximately, start the engine up, with uh, 236,272 miles on the odometer. Now, this is my personal Silverado vehicle, and it's been an ongoing build project uh, for, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, two years now, and uh, I'm gonna continue that project. Uh, previously, in uh, other videos on this particular vehicle here, uh, I installed and equipped this uh, 66 Duramax with a dual alternator conversion. So I actually performed the uh, dual alternator modification uh, with a second factory alternator. They're both 145 amp output. And when I did that, everyone in the world was like, hey man, that's, that's really cool, but why didn't you just install a single high output alternator? And I had my reasons. Uh, I thought having two naters would be really cool, so I want to just install the second one using all those factory components. Okay, let's get under the hood here and I'll show you guys uh, what exactly I speak of here. Oh, all righty, so over here on the left-hand side, passenger side of the vehicle, this is the factory alternator location. And this is a factory spec OEM alternator. It's actually a uh, reman that I think came from CarQuest long, long ago. But basically she bolts in right there and runs off the belt. Now the provision for the secondary alternator is right over here. The, uh, the bolt and the bracket is already in place for this extra idler pulley. So when you do the dual conversion, all you have to do is get this bracket right here from a 4500 Kodiak, and then you have to get that pulley down there and then a little bit longer belt, and that will let you, using the factory bolts on the uh, the front bracketry to install this second uh, second alternator. So basically, uh, I took the 145, added another 145, and got you know 280, 300 amps, um, you know, at my disposal. And again, when I did that, everybody was like, "Hey, man, why didn't you just install a 300 amp alternator?" Now, the reason that I didn't just go ahead and pull out the single alternator and install an HO alternator, um, well, actually, there's a couple reasons. Number one. Like I said earlier, I thought that the two naters would be really cool, and I wanted to. Uh, the second reason is what I have here now is redundancy. So if we have a failure of one of these charging units, uh, I still have another one to back it up, and I think that's also pretty cool. So I got a backup from a backup, and I was able to double my potential electrical output. So here's where it gets good. I had a, uh, or the video that I made about this alternator conversion, caught the attention from a company out in Riverside, California. It's called DC Power Engineering. Uh, they produce uh, high output, low RPM alternators that are designed specifically to kind of fill the niche and uh, fill the, uh, the electrical requirements that I was looking for with this particular project. Now you might ask, Ray, this thing had 145 amps at your disposal. It's a diesel without an electronic ignition. It does not have a fuel pump. Why would you want to add ele extra power output capability? And I will show you in a second. If we were to mosey out back here, back to the toolbox on the truck, pop this guy open, take a look down here. We have a very, very large 4D battery cell and a couple sine wave power inverters that produce 120 volts AC power, okay? so. This idea right here originally stemmed from Hurricane Irma a couple years ago. We were without power at my house for about a week or so. Uh, what I was doing is I had this inverter plus another inverter connected to the batteries on this truck that were sitting on my front porch and I had extension cords plugged into it. And uh, I was basically running uh, some of this stuff inside of my house off of the vehicle. Flashback to Hurricane Ian. All right, still no power. It's uh, around midnight, the truck's going, I've got it idled up to uh, about 1,000 RPM. Let's 
check our, our voltage here. Let's see what we got, meter. Sorry, lighting is terrible. Yeah, we're 13 and a half volts. Running two inverters, one clean power sine wave inverter. And that one's dirty power for some lights. We're, yeah, we're going. It's We're gonna be out of power for a while. So I got the bright idea that during our next hurricane season, I'd be a little bit more prepared. And I went ahead and installed and built this system and integrated it into the truck. Now, why would I do that, you may ask? And the answer lies right in front of the toolbox here. I have a 90 gallon auxiliary diesel fuel tank right in there. Down below in the vehicle, I have another 32 gallons. So we're gonna call it, you know, roughly, let's say 120 gallons of fuel to play with, okay? Now, because I have 120 gallons of diesel that's not gonna go bad, that's a fuel pump, got 120 gallons of diesel that's not gonna go bad, during a long-term power outage, I have a lot of electrical producing capability. Now, my gasoline generator at the house, I've only got five or six gallons in the generator, plus, you know, call it, uh, call it four cans of fuel if I were to stock up, so I've got 20, 25, maybe 30, 30 gallons of gasoline. Now, that 30 gallons of gasoline in one of those big gen sets, that's gonna run out actually fairly quickly. So my thought process was, is during our power outage moments, I could run the gasoline generator during the daytime because that's when we need the most electricity. At night, I can switch things over to the inverters, run the diesel engine at idle or just off idle, and then utilize the extra charging capabilities to keep up with the load that the inverters and the rear, the rear mounted battery system are going to be pulling uh, off the vehicle. Now, this system has performed flawlessly. There's nothing wrong with it. And I believe I have adequate electricity to run the extra systems in the vehicle, run the inverters if I need to. I can run my fuel pump down there if I need to. Lights, sirens, winches, whatever I want, you name it. I have the electrical power and the storage capability to utilize that power. However, the folks at DC Power Engineering said, hey Ray, we don't think you have enough, sir. And yes, they're probably right. So what they did is they gave me an email. I called them up, we had a chat about it, and they said, hey dude, would you like to try out one of our new units that we've put together that fits your truck and replaces the DR44G alternators? So you got a 44G and a 44 right there. And they offered up for experimentation purposes one of their own uh, I believe they're hand-built units, but one of their own units that can upgrade this electrical system. So what I would like to do is install the DC power engineering alternator in the factory alternator location. That one's gonna go here. I want to keep this one over here. Uh, reason being, that was a reman unit. And as soon as I put it in there, uh, one of the things I was noticing is after startup on occasion, uh, that alternator would not wake up for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, which is pretty much okay, but things not right. This one over here has performed flawlessly, so I'm just gonna keep this one right here, and we're gonna change out this one with the new upgraded unit, which I have over on the bench. Okay, so I got an idea. All we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw this, uh, this old school battery load tester on the system, okay? See if I can't get a good ground here. There's one down there. I'm gonna go ahead and ground that out. So what this thing does is it's basically like a toaster with a knob on it. There's a series of heating elements down inside. And as I crank this knob up, it's going to uh, pull a load out of the electrical system. So here we go. We're already pulling 100 amps, 200 amps, 300 amps. You get the picture. Now we're holding voltage here. So what I wanna do, we're, we're smoking. I was, it was pulling smoke out of the uh, connector there. So what I'm gonna do here, we're gonna hop inside and I need to connect this rear system with the front system because this is uh, normally isolated. But I've installed this uh, golf, cart, uh, uh, golf cart motor solenoid, there we go. So basically you apply power here, it makes a connection between here and here and then it produces one solid connection between the two systems. So one system's connected here, the other side is connected over there, and I can just turn it on and off with a switch. That switch is located up here in the center console. There we go. So now, both of these two systems, both batteries, 
are tied together as one system rather than two. And that sound you hear is the vent fan. You guys are saying I need to get a vent fan in here. I have installed a vent fan, check it out. Nice and clean too. So, when I apply load to this vehicle, it's gonna be pulling load off of all the batteries, not just the ones up front. See, yeah, look at that, 300 amps, no problem. 400 amps and it's still holding voltage. Look at that, that's a lot of storage capability. And again, we're letting the smoke out. Let's turn her down. That's a lot of amps, you guys. That's a lot of amps. Over here getting uh, connections hot and melting stuff. Yeah, 400 amps is no joke, fellas. That's no joke whatsoever. Okay, so before we kick this party off, real quick, I'm gonna take a measurement on the output uh, on both of these alternators, actually. I've got a uh, up to 400 amp DC amp clamp right here. Is that light on? Yeah, it's on. So I've got an amp clamp here and we are connected to the multimeter and I think we need the millivolt scale on DC for this. Let me calibrate, yep. So what I wanna do real quick is we're just gonna fire up the truck and I'm going to apply a 12 volt DC load with that testing unit and we're just gonna get a baseline measurement for what these alternators will produce uh, while running. Then I'm going to show you guys the DC power engineering high output 270 amp alternator. We're gonna talk about that some, we're gonna get it installed and then recheck and see what the difference is in power output. So basically, forgive the loudness. I'm trying to dial that in as close to zero as I can, there we go. What we do, we'll come back over here, and I need to clamp the probe on that wire right there. So we'll stick it on in the hole, it's around the wire. Alternator number one, right now at idle, we're running 30 amps, okay? So let's crank up some load. Pull some load here, 200 amps. Use alternator. This alternator is coming out 97, 95. And I fire this up some more and all we're getting out of it is 99. That's an idle, okay? Let's go check the other one. That's the secondary, secondary unit. There we go, connected the second alternator at idle with uh, no extra load, 30 amps, 35. Let's go ahead and crank up the power again. 118 at a 300 amp draw. Okay, shutting down the load. Power that guy down. Disconnect. Power the probe down. So, as we were pulling DC amps with the load tester, we saw 120 amps out of this alternator, we saw about 100 out of this one. Now, why the difference, you may ask. And that difference is actually in the pulley size. See the diameter of this pulley? About an inch and three quarter. This one down here, that's a much, much smaller pulley. That means that this alternator is actually going to run faster than that one will. So, Technically speaking, this right here is our primary unit because it is, uh, it's up to its operating speed before that one is because this one happens to be turning faster. But this is the one we're focusing on right now. We know it's 100 amps, so that's kind of our benchmark or our baseline rather. So we're gonna be looking for at least 100 amps or more out of the replacement DC power engineering unit, which we're gonna go take a look at right now after my darling wife unit yeah. makes her mandatory yeah. video appearance. Hi, we got you. You didn't see that coming there, did no, you? No, I didn't. Hello, Hi. Darling. Hi. Do I have anything in my teeth? You have something in your teeth. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. You never do, but oh, I saw you. I'm you all were sweaty and. Uh, you nervous? Yeah. You nervous? I'm, I'm going to turn we're red. At you. We're I'm turning red. We're, we're, we're looking at you. Get the light out of my face. Oh, this one? Ah. All right, guys. This unit right here, the moment we've all been waiting for, I suppose is our upgraded unit from DC Power Engineering. Again, out of Riverside, California. Uh, they did not pay me to make this video. 
But uh, they did offer me up this alternator for the experimentation and I thank you fellows for that very much. First off, I'd like to notice that this uh, actual case appears to be brand new and if it's not new, it's beautifully refurbished. The windings look magnificently stout and the front cover appears to be machined out billet, which is also a nice aesthetic upgrade. I like this thing, it's gorgeous. So like I said, they, uh, they build these specific units uh, for a niche market. Uh, for example, guys like me that have extra loads, some of the folks that run car audio would benefit from such things, uh, or any uh, ambulances could, or any service vehicles that happen to require any extra power. Now, one thing they have supplied us with so we can tune this alternator properly is an extra set of pulleys here. So we've got our standard pulley, I think that's uh, two inches, an inch and three quarter, and I believe this one here is an inch and a half. Actually, we can find out right now. We'll bust out the micrometer and see. Let's just get this outside of the ribs. Looks like 2.4. This may not be the correct spec to measure from, but we're trying two inches. And this one here, it's one, uh, 1.8 inches or so. So basically we can tune this alternator so that its shaft speed uh, at your desired engine speed will produce the output that is necessary. Uh, if you were to look at the chart on this unit, you'll see that at 2,200 RPM on shaft speed, we're nearly at peak production. It makes roughly like 250 to 270 amps all the way down at 2,200 RPM. So we actually may not need to overdrive this, but in case we do, we have the extra pulleys to go with it. So now that we know what we're doing, we know why we're doing it, and we know what we're doing it with, Let's go ahead and start pulling this thing apart some. And we're gonna dig out this old new-ish something unit and we're gonna pop in that bad boy here just in a minute. Um, one thing I also need to note is gonna be our power output wire from this alternator. Uh, this one is designed to handle 175 amps, but, or 145 rather, but I'm gonna be pushing 280 250 more amps so i'm probably going to need to upgrade this cable uh, at the same time okay first item of business is get the belt off so you see i've got the uh a ratchet down on the tensioner pulley i did that when you guys weren't looking what i'm gonna do here is pull this pulley back and we're just gonna pull the belt off of this alternator let it hang out there and I'll let the tensioner go back to its home position here. Pull that out. So over here in the front of the nader, we've got two 15 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna run through and pull those guys out. And then we can pry this nader out of position here. Where if you pedal backwards, it just kind of ratchets and clicks. Get at it from this angle here. Maybe I can pry it up out of that mount. Let's get under a little bit. There we go. Come out, come out, you stubborn thing. There we go. Okay, so we got her loose. Okay, let's get in here, get this thing disconnected. Unclick of the 10 mil. And again, I'm going to reuse this cable as well as install another auxiliary cable here. Here's our nut. Okay, the nader's free. Let's go ahead and pull her on out. Okay, new nader coming in. I, I went ahead and pulled the pulley off. It'll probably be easier 
to uh, to handle that off the car then on the car why won't you fit in there here let's just wiggle this unit down inside hmm nope not enough I need to spread out the uh, little bracket inserts down there come back out now oh I got it in there deep too yeah these little guys right there those are inserts that will slide back and forth so when the bolt clamps down on the alternator that will slide in to make contact with the front of the mounting bracket those are pushed in too far so I need to pull them back out some and the way we do that is with a nut or a bolt and a socket that fits over that insert so watch this take the bolt slide that through and the nut is going to push on the insert when i tighten down the bolt and it's going to pull it out of the bracket towards us the 13 right here let's give this a couple little turns okay i feel it moving it's probably good And we'll do the other side as well. Yeah, you can see there's witness marks on that insert now where it, it was sliding out of the bracket. Those knuckle busting slippage. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and back it out. Now we shall see if the nader is going to fit. There's my custom tool. And drop it down in there. Ah, much more better. -er. It fits. Okay, so two bolts coming in. And second one down below. Right into the bracket like we want. Beautiful. Fifteen mil. You guys see that insert move in? See that one go in? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this cable all together. It runs right across the top right here, and then it comes down to this little red junction block down there where I've got a couple other cables bust into it. That's a factory part right there. What we'll do is just go ahead and unbolt this. Or unnut it, rather. There's a nut. And we're just gonna pull that thing off straight away. So this cable, this is the power cable going to this alternator. So what I wanna do is dig that guy out. This is the factory fusible link right here. It's the one we just disconnected. So, we put the starter cable on. We put the secondary alternator power cable on right there. And I'll use the big red over here to connect that alternator. I think that's probably the best way to run this. So we'll route this guy in along the uh the path of the original there we go pull that through and i want to run it behind i think yeah there we go like that need to give it a loop a little bit of turn right there 
clearance is good. Okay. Yeah, that'll work there. So we run it along the hose. We can zip tie it to the radiator hose, I think. Back down here. And then we're gonna meet up with the other cable right down there. And it doesn't fit just like the other one did, so I need to make that hole bigger. Yeah, you know what? Um, I've changed my mind yet again uh, while we're doing this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this charging lug back together, and I'm not going to attach the alternator uh, to this circuit. I'm gonna run that alternator direct to this battery positive right here because I, I have enough cable. So I'd rather just do that than, yeah, well, let me back up. If I run the thing here, then I'm still utilizing the factory cable to supply power to this battery, which seems to be enough. But if I'm cranking, you know, 280, 320 amps or more uh, through that cable, that may be overloading it. So we'll run this cable directly to this battery. Then I will take the factory cable which is kind of redundant at this point, and I don't think I need it, but we're gonna take that one and run it from that nader under the intake straight to this battery. That way, both batteries have a direct line to that alternator. Then this alternator right here will be connected through that direct line, but it's also got its own circuitry that it can piggyback off of. That way we've got all kinds of extra wires to carry any load necessary, so the the big, the big line upgrade has been applied to both alternators, uh, not just the single one. So let me get in here and tighten that little manifold thing down, or uh, junction block thing. Junction manifold. So now this nader wire, we're gonna run it along the path of the others. We're gonna go down under the coolant hose this time. And we'll run it straight across down here to the B plus connection on this battery. I like this idea. Yeah, this one, that's the factory cable. It splits going to the fuse block, to the starter, and then the other one goes over to the other battery. So what we'll do is we're gonna sandwich in this connection right here against the nut. And we can set it back down in there and connect the bolt. So now at this point, uh, this alternator has live power going to it. Okay, 13 millimeter bolt nut on the alternator stud right here. Let's go ahead and just kind of mock that up. So it looks like this terminal lug is no longer sufficient. So we're gonna do the same trick as the other side. We're gonna use a bolt and a nut, thread them down like so, and we'll thread the bolt into the battery. That way we can stack up all these uh, extra connections here. So there's our fusible link. This one, I don't even know where that goes. It powers something. And this guy, we just stack them all together here. Screw it in. We can stack up our big boy cables going out back. We're out of order. That cable. This cable is coming in next. And then the last one is the, the big cable that goes over to the driver's side battery. So now I can just screw this bolt into the little block here. Take two, that bolt didn't fit, so I, I got another one. And a nut. So, where was I? Uh, fusible link, right? That goes on. We'll stick on that power line. Go ahead and plug in two cables for the auxiliary system here. Need to thread the nut back, I don't have enough threads. Pull that guy back. 
and then the big cable again that ties the units together. And if my hand was in the way that whole time, I'm sorry. So, we go ahead and get this fusible link added into the, the circuits. Tighten down the nut because the bolt is now bottomed out in the battery bracket. So we'll use the nut. Okay, let's get this guy tight. Nothing crazy, we don't want to strip the threads out or anything. Just nice and snug so it can't come loose. That's on there, so now the fusible link. That one is attached to the new nader. That bolt needs to be tightened up next. We've already got the plug in place. Click that together. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what, guys? I just realized I will not be able to test this if it has two cables on the output. So here's what we're gonna do. Just for the uh, ability for us to test this in a minute, I'm gonna disconnect that fusible link wire that's coming to that other battery. This is a, it's an auxiliary wire. You don't really need to have it here. It's just there for, uh, for extra, for fun and for redundancy. So we're gonna leave that guy disconnected for the time being. When we're done checking out the output on the new unit, I'll go ahead and plug this thing back in. Okay, time for pulley selection here. So we've got the three options, small, medium, and large. I wanna size this. That one's actually larger than the factory one. That one's a tiny bit smaller than the factory one, but we're gonna go with, with that one right there. We're gonna use this pulley. So slide that thing on and over. We'll get our uh, nut here. There we go. Get that guy on. Come in real quick with the uh, impact here. It's the 90. So what I'll do here is hang on to that pulley. Okay, we are connected. Free spinning, that's good. Um, quick disclaimer also, I may need to end up pulling that overdrive pulley off of the, uh, the secondary alternator, because at this point, I don't think I need to have that one overdriven. But that needs to be determined later, I think. So here, let's go ahead and get the wrench on the tensioner. Still can't see, I'm a terrible cameraman today, guys. Oh my God. Anyway, so we got the ratchet on the tensioner. I'm gonna pull back tension here and we're gonna pick the belt back up and slide it over the new nader. Okay, so pull this guy back, untension the tensioner, fish our belt up, get it around that nader, relax it. It's in position here. Move back my ratchet. Okay. All right, guys, the new nader is in and it's so nice and shiny. So we're connected, four post connector, we're bolted on, it's in the factory location. And I have not changed anything with regards to the function of the second unit. Uh, like I said a second ago, I may end up uh, changing out the pulley on this to slow this one down because this one's overdriven. In fact, let's check out this pulley. Let's see if these are the same. If they're not the same, ah, uh, yeah, those are the same. Hmm, I think I might just need to get one more of the 1.75 inch. I could change this one out. It is white letter, I like it. But I believe that's the same diameter as the other units here. But you know what, since these are the same size and I think I need that pulley over there and the belt's already on, I'm just gonna save the pulley transfer on this nader for another time just because I don't feel like taking it all apart and doing it again. 
I won't get any change in performance out of this pulley. So other than the fact that it looks super awesome being white letter, I, I really don't need to change it out. Uh, that one's too big and that one's the same size as what I have. So what I think I want is the same one over there. That way they'll bo they both will run at the same speed. All right, let's see what happens here. Fire it back up. You clear, Dave? Everybody good? Let's go ahead and connect that to the primary unit. So we're at 100 amps. It's making 100 amps right now with no load on it. That's a lot of amps. So now, take our load unit. Coming up. Look at that. 175 amps and 150 amp draw. This thing is just all oh, over that. It's killing it. Let's go up to 300 amps on our load. And that alternator is making 200 amps right now down at idle. Real quick though, let's go disconnect this other alternator. You can shut this one down. Here. I'll shut the engine off before I disconnect this. Folks won't like me disconnecting that while it's running. It might ruin the diodes. So we have no load. This thing's making 115 at idle. Cranking it up to 200 amps. We're making 200. So at the current idle speed where we're at, that thing's maxed out at 200 amps, okay? Let's pick up the high idle and see if we get any more power draw out of it. So hit that button there. Idle goes up. We're running about 850, 900 RPM. No load. 200 amp load. 216. Cranking it up to 300. So we're topping out at 215 amps on the meter. And we're rolling smoke out of the tester. Yeah. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and step it up one more time. Not that one. Eight, nine hundred, it's at that one there. Now we're at 1200 RPM. Still our nominal 100 amps. Fire up the node. 300 amps load. 230. 400 amps load. 230. I idle off. I think I'm catching my tester on fire. Play it. Ah, the tester's on fire. That's not okay. So here, now we're at 89, 90 amps. Let's go ahead and turn on the other alternator. It didn't seem to care. Let's see how much output the second nader is making. And it only cares to do about six amps. Shut her all down and do a restart. Okay, rechecking the second alternator. It's not really doing much. The first one's really overtaking everything. Let's put a load on it. Again. You hear that thing come on? Secondary alternator. Look at that. She's making 100 amps. 
the second one's doing 100 amps. First one, 194 amps. I'm getting almost 300 amps of output at idle. That's fantastic. Smoking. I say that's enough for this tester for the day. This tester has received more workout today than I think it has in the entire time that I've owned it. That's hot. Load tester, hot, hot, hot. Hey, look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Burning the dust now. 30, 95. Yeah. So, what this tells me is that even though this thing is underdriven, since that alternator is designed to produce its maximum output at its bottom end, this alternator never feels the need to even turn on. So, in this current configuration, this charging unit will only power up once that one has reached its maximum output. So, I basically have staggered charging system ability. And I think that's a really, really cool. Power that off. Looking good here. Uh, I need to go ahead and shut this down real quick and I just need to go back in and put that fusible link onto the alternator post here we go real quick we can come in here and crack that guy loose again take the fusible link Ooh, that's hot 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 holy smokes that thing chooched out some heat well, I did run it full throttle on a cold start. Never did that before. I guess I, I really did just put this through its paces. Hey guys, at DC Power, um, if you see the abuse I just put this alternator through, I'm, I'm really sorry. It's just kind of what I do. If you cringe at what I've done to your beautiful creation, I don't blame you. But at least we now know, out of the box, it'll run full capacity at idle, which is what you built it for. Good job, fellas. So in short, we have effectively doubled the available power output. So I've got, I'm gonna call it 250. They said it's rated 270. Uh, we saw about 230, 240 out of it. So maybe it came in a little bit under what, uh, what it was specced out to be. Okay, real quick side note based on that uh, previous comment. Naturally, I had to remove the factory fusible link, which is the alternator cable to the batteries due to its small size. At this point, I've had one extra cable installed for the secondary alternator, and now I've gone ahead and installed another extra cable for this upgraded primary alternator. Now, that particular cable may not be capable of carrying the 270 amps that this alternator is capable of producing. Truth be told, I did not check the gauge and length against uh, 12 volt current flow or 14 volt current flow. So uh, this cable is potentially actually undersized for its current application. At this point, I fully intend to go back in and re-cable both alternators, the grounds and both batteries to ensure maximum current carrying capability. But regardless, it completely walked away from the OEM factory unit that I just pulled out. One more uh, side note uh, while we're here. I also think I should probably size both alternators up one pulley size larger to slow them down a little bit. So the HO high output primary alternator, I should probably put the pulley that it came with on that unit and then the pulley that's currently installed on the primary alternator should be moved over to the secondary in order to slow that one down ever so slightly. That way both units will work in staggered. So the HO alternator will take up the majority of the load. And then we have another one that can chime in later on when voltage starts to fall and amp production is limited based on speed. All right, fellas, I think that's all that I have to offer you on this uh, particular endeavor for the time being. So let me know what you think about this DC power engineering charging output unit in the comment section down below. Uh, do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. 
If you would like to look into installing one of these particular units on uh, your vehicle, just visit dcpowerinc.com. They'll take you over to those guys' website. Uh, again, this is not a sponsored video. They gave me that thing for free to try it out and display and, uh, and install it, and that's what we're doing here today. I accepted their offer, and I am more than happy with uh, the product that they've created so far. Seeing 230 amps uh, down there at, at engine idle speed is absolutely phenomenal. They did a great job, and as a bonus, I know the thing's robust because I didn't just blow it up when I pulled 400 amps out of it. Or out of the system, per se. It was actually pulling amperage out of the batteries because that thing was only able to make uh, about 230, 240. I imagine it'll step up a little bit if we get the thing rolling and it's at a higher speed for a longer period of time, but we were just down at idle, so I'm not going to be too harsh on the unit. Plus, it looks really, really, really cool. Like, I like the fins. So, guys, anyway, again, I have nothing more to offer you in this particular video other than I thank you for watching this video. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know about this project in the comment section again down below. Do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a video, end of alternator, end of upgrade, end of Silverado, end of transmission.